Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Sesso here bringing us a video here today, bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to get your own very cool Apex Legends header design. Now, a lot of you guys have just been like really asking me to do one of these and obviously I get it, it has hype, you guys want to update your stuff. Um, that's good to know. I'm just gonna give you guys my little presentation of it and my good little go around. But this video is also really cool because it's gonna, uh, I guess it's gonna be like the first image. I'm not, uh, English is hard. Uh, I'm gonna firstly put over the Apex Legends little asset resource pack that I put together for you guys. I even left the clipping mask, so if I ever messed up and or you guys just wanna fix a few things, um, you guys definitely can. But these are all pen tooled out, all that good stuff. Um, just a few different items and resources, like I said. Uh, however, it's not done yet. It'll be done by the time I put this video up for sure. But I wanted more than just renders. I'm do a few little things that like uh, placements I call them placements something more or less like this right um, like these three little lines right here oops I'm um, these little lines I'm like these little sort of things right here um, this stuff right here that is simply make an illustrator um so yeah it'll be in the description down below for you guys to kind of speed up your process of just googling things and whatnot but with that said I'm gonna show you guys to do something like this right here as well with the character model I just put I think you could put something really cool in the middle of his chest if you guys want to but I just put my logo from my background whatever I just literally print screened it um but yeah cool little textures as well I'll put in the actual resource pack for the sake of the video um because they are so they're gonna coming in my new pack that's coming out very soon um but I'm gonna put these in here because it really closely resembles the actual texture of the actual uh uh, I guess the texture they use in the actual game. Um, with that being said, let's just get this thing going. Toys on the video because I see it down below, which will mostly be the PSD that you guys see right here. But don't worry about it. You don't have to hit 200 likes to hit. To, you guys probably will anyway. Um, you don't have to hit 200 likes to get the cool resource pack. So go ahead and just check that out for you guys. And I'll leave, I'll leave a like if you guys enjoy it and like it. So just let me know that. Maybe we'll hit 200 likes for the people who want to get the PSD faster. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's get this. Let's just get this thing going. Um. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go and get this thing going right here, right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, the backgrounds, by the way, they're going to be also be backgrounds in the actual asset pack, so you guys can pick one from there. Um, but I'm just going to be using this one for today's video, and also, it's not really that, like, whatever. I kind of just use it on the left-hand side, like, very faintly to kind of mention um, Apex Legends, the map itself, rather than just, you know, kind of having the all cool little UI sort of, like, flashy, flashy? Is that a word? Flashy um, UI kind of stuff, you know what I mean? So on the right-hand side. So I'm going to start off with just simply kind of bringing in an actual um, Legends thing. Um, oh, excuse me, a Legends character. There we go. Um, with that being said, though, I'm actually going to change up just a little bit just to kind of spice it up, I guess, the video itself. Um, this video, I use a... Um with this example, I use like a robot. I'm just going to use like the red guy for this case because this is also a really cool render as well. I'm going to just take this one and let's just go ahead and just drag this baby inside over here. <clears throat> now, oh, it's just got to hide this. Sorry. There we go. All right. We're going to drag this guy in here. So it is um, a fairly big size and I actually got it. It's uh, the actual document size. I think it was in like a 3000 or so document size. So I want to get renders that can fit in like a 3000 by 1000 actual document. So you guys want to have too much trouble with the whole, um, how do you say quality wise? So this should be a pretty good little mention right here i'll put this right here i'll put that yeah right about there right fairly close yeah all right cool so on um, the actual right hand side here so i actually activated and or put in why am i using such weird words can we can we talk about that um let's just go ahead and just do on the right hand side which is that white background so the way i end up doing that english i'm just keep going you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pen tool out right behind the actual character and uh, faintly then move over to the right hand side just like so right move over to the right hand side so that way I kind of fill in an actual random shape just in the back here that will go ahead and kind of mask off uh, whatever we ever need to put on the left hand side which is gonna be the actual picture we're using over here right so I'm gonna move this over actually now <clears throat> the picture that is and I'll move that like right about here where it kind of was before shows a pretty good area of the map whatever you can even zoom in if you guys wish to but that's perfectly fine for me and i'll move forward by just going ahead and throwing on that cool texture that i put in the actual resource pack just like so and with this texture here all you have to do is on that red or whatever color you chose um sort of little placement block here just simply clip and mask this texture on top of that and then you're good to go most people will probably be like yo Cecil, you probably just could you know use the actual texture and then mask it like this and kind of you know cut it off whatever whatever works for you i just wanted to do it this way <laughs> you know one of those kind of things i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of shrink this down a little bit more so i can get a better sort of like uh quality to it because it's a fairly you know high quality uh texture but i want more of like a, a tighter sort of um spread out pattern of these cool little uh grungy nesses nesses yep cool so we're gonna go ahead and just type in the word legends i believe is what i had before now this font here it's called i'll show you guys in one second let me see what i did here okay um, it's called Merrick, so I'll put the actual, I, I haven't started, I'm going to start doing this now. Um, I'm going to start putting the actual font down that I use in the video primarily in the actual description down below, but, uh, down below as well. There's a reason why I'm starting, I have no idea, so don't, don't talk about it, please. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of, like, I want to match this fairly, fairly close to what I did before with the sizing. 
<laughs> oh yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, let me show you guys something really quickly. So what I started been doing recently, what I started doing recently was mess around with the VA and also the actual, um, I don't know you would call this, but I guess the actual sort of shrinkingness of the actual, uh, the word and text and font. Um, simply because it kind of gives it a really cool look. And I'm going to show you guys really quickly if I put this back to 100 and I give this back to uh, 0, right? I mean, the, the font doesn't change very much, but you can get a really cool sort of aesthetic feel to it when you kind of mess around with the actual VA uh, spacing because this font right here for me, originally I was just like, it's a little bit too spaced out in my opinion. So I'm just take the VA right here. And if you guys want to have this actual table, it's just under your Windows characters. And you can just take it when you actually have it open. Just take it and drag it onto your sidebar right here and you can always have it handy for you guys and just click on the a and you'll kind of you'll pop it up so i take the va here i just simply just shrink it down by putting my um taking my scroll wheel on my mouse right simply just you know drag down or scroll down excuse me and i change my va now as well for some reason i know it doesn't look it doesn't look good on every single font but I would like to say on this kind of font here if you kind of shrink down this part here You kind of get a really cool different vibe and it also kind of just kind of separates you from people using the same exact font um I kind of want to mention that because I think it's a fairly cool idea and I also want to say it's pretty damn cool So I'm gonna go ahead and do this actual surrounding box now and for this here I'm gonna go ahead and move this over I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer below the uh, word legends And I'm gonna simply just use the rectangle marquee tool just like so and I'm gonna make a fairly good size box right about here um, okay, cool. I'm just gonna fill this in with any color. It doesn't matter whatsoever. If you guys know how to quick fill in when you actually have a selection enabled, you can just press Alt Backspace and you're good to go. Um, when you press Alt Backspace, it quick fills whatever color is actually in your foreground, which is right here. So if primarily you wanted to switch it to a black beforehand, you can do that, like literally just like click this, right? Switch to a black and you're, now you're black, right? So basically what I wanted to do personally was uh, fill it in with black. If you guys didn't ever change it to black, whatever color you end, end up changing it to, you can press Control U on the keyboard just like so take your lightness now for the reference here um take your lightness and just drop it all the way down to one negative 100 right it'll give you guys a pure black obviously and you can press ok and you can move forward so what i'd like to do now is Control t on my keyboard right click and we're going to use the skew option here and just give ourselves a really cool little simple sort of diagonal line skew <clears throat> this will just kind of come in handy with just sort of like giving that cool little there's a lot of diagonal lines and sort of like really cool sort of um even like the, the victory screen what was it the victory screen has this cool little simple box that's also tilted that same angle so having that be represented behind the text is a pretty cool idea now i'm gonna change the color here of the text to white and now with that done I'm going to go ahead and do this very simple, cool little thing I saw for the actual UI and kind of just, you know, cut this out in a very simple way. What I ended up doing was taking a pen tool here. So before I actually clicked on this, what I, what I ended up clicking on, sorry, was the actual layer mask down here. So when you click on this, what, excuse me, what I use it for is basically erase, but it also kind of gives you guys a backup if you guys like kind of mess up or something like that, right? So if I were to just simply really quickly take my brush, right? And for this, I have to use a black brush to erase and or fill in a black color, by the way. Um, so if I use a black brush to erase, let's say, you, hey, hey, I'm going to erase this out or you pencil this out and then you like quick fill it in with black. That'll erase it, right? <clears throat> if I use white, right, just like this, it can fill it back in to its perfect, you know, whatever it was before, right? So that's just a cool little thing, kind of mask it out. And uh, we're going to be using that just simply just so I can just kind of do this, right? I'm going to pencil out this corner with a diagonal sort of pen tool line. And I'll back, uh, bend tool this out here. I'll get it as even as possible. It really doesn't honestly matter, but it kind of does. So if I would honestly, would probably also just take um, one side, do one side, and then kind of cut this in half and then flip it over maybe to make it perfect. But for this case of the video, I'm just going to say we're going to eyeball it and we're good to go. So when I quick fill this in, right, we're going to make a selection, press OK. And I'm going to quick fill with Alt or Control Backspace this time because Control Backspace is the actual background color of black now because that is the actual background color. If I did Alt Backspace, it would quick fill it in with white and that fills it in. So just keep, you know, pay that attention. It's okay. Just You can press either one multiple times to see which ones actually erase and or fill in, right? So now that's done there, I'm going to just simply go ahead and do this part here. We're going to make another layer right below that black box. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and just click somewhere on this line right there that's good actually it doesn't really matter we'll click somewhere like off that line we'll just click somewhere like right here like offset not on that perfect straight line right there i'm gonna go ahead now and pen tool this around kind of copy the same angle and i'll come down here and then we'll fill this in right there and then i'll go back in and connect it right so it's on this line here kind of like sort of like hopefully you know sort of the same distance away from the actual black box it's a little bit skinnier here that's okay though just give it a little more dramatic i guess uh feel to it then i'm gonna go ahead and right click fill drop down use color and the color i'm going to basically be using is i'm just going to use a gray this time did i use gray last time i think i did but 
I'll use, we'll just use gray for now. We can change the color if we want to. So take the gray, right? Now that that's done there, I'm just gonna simply just drag this over with using Alt in backspace, excuse me, Alt and Shift. If I hold Alt, it makes a duplicate just like so, right? If I let go, there's a duplicate layer and or you can press Control J on your keyboard, right? Right? Or but if I hold Alt and Shift, it'll move it on the same exact axis, whichever direction I move originally, right? So you can see how it's only moving side and side and not up and down when I move my mouse up and down. So that will ensure if I press Control T, I flip it horizontal first, then I flip it vertically, <clears throat> and then I can drag it in here just like so and get it fairly close to what it looks like on this side over here, even though this cut right here is not the same. So I'm going to push this in a little bit more. Um, This needs to be in. This needs to be on the top. And I would say that's pretty, pretty accurate. Maybe like this. All right, for people like I, I hate this when it comes to like ADHD and like all that sizing and stuff we'll say this is pretty okay okay all right so now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and simply just do this sort of little part right here where I kind of texturize it a little bit more and that's simple as using the same exact texture I showed you guys before so I'm gonna go ahead and also I realized this one's a little more uh, thicker than the other one so I'm just gonna quickly take all three of these um, four of these right here go ahead and press control T and then kind of make it a little more skinnier Cool. So now that I made it a little more skinny, I'm going to take just the black layer here. So I'm going to click on the black layer. That way, whatever layer I put in from another document size, it puts it right above that layer. I'm going to go ahead and jump back into my pack here and jump on this little um, texture again. So with this texture, I'm going to have it reverted automatically, by the way, or inverted, excuse me. But what you want to end up doing is, uh, why is that happening? Someone tell me, please. Oh, because it's not okay i was confused for a second because the white background the white all right you guys got it anyway if i just turn off the actual invert it'll make it black and that's basically the little simple little trick that you guys just go ahead and make you know quick little black and white backgrounds you might see a really cool black texture make it to white it might look really really awesome as well but that's basically what i did for this and now the actual back plate is now black and what i'll do now is take this put this on the actual word legends right i'm going to invert it again and make it white here so we have a nice little texture on the word legends now being white I can go ahead and shrink this down to a really good fine size to get more of a finer, grungy feel to it. <clears throat> and I think it looks pretty good. I did also one other thing, and I also use this for my pack again. I'm just kind of like flirting with it a little bit, you know what I mean? I'll just show you guys a little bit like this right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just drag this on to you. If you guys have a brush or something like that, you can use a brush and or just type in like maybe like a grunge. I don't know what I would type in to find this, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's just use this for now, right? Just kind of like spice it just a little bit more, um, give it a little more detail. I, just type in maybe grunge. You might find a really cool um, overlaid uh, pattern or excuse me, overlaid texture that you can just kind of erase around a little bit. But for me, I just want to give it a little more of a different texture than just the same thing in the background, just kind of like slightly, right? So now what I'm going to end up doing is we'll do the simple little uh, things in the back right here. So the way to do that, you probably guessed it, literally just use a simple little rectangle, right? <coughs> We'll go like this, fill that in, just like that. Now, all I'm gonna do is press Control T on my keyboard. By the way, the reason why I didn't show you guys to do that, we already did that before, right? All I did was use the marquee tool, right? I make a nice little simple rectangle, pretty good size. Alt, backspace, my foreground color is already my black, so it'll quick fill to black, right? Um, or simply right click, fill, drop down content, and then go to black, press OK. Right click, deselect, and or press Control D on your keyboard. So. Control T on your keyboard this time. I'm gonna rotate this just like this. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my uh, rectangle marquee tool once again. Go like this, hover over the top, boom. Hover over the bottom, delete. Oops, what button am I not pressing? R, I think, Control R, maybe, okay. All right, so now that I have that there, I'm gonna put this one a little farther down from it. Put this one right back up, just like so. I think that's pretty good. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag these three layers right here. I'll group them together if you guys want to call it like maybe like a like streaks in the background, right? And I'm gonna just drag this right below this black box here. And I'm gonna call this black box so you guys can see. That's the text, obviously. So this goes gonna go right here behind that black box. Uh, oops, behind the black box. Okay, one more time for the boys. That's not the black box. That's the texture. Ta-da! Black box, and this is the texture. Sorry. Um. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and just take these little streaks here, 
put that right behind it pretty nice and neatly and that's sort of the thing that actually comes out when it says like you're a champion so maybe just kind of that just a little simple ask that kind of you know kind of hint that the game that you're a champion whoever the name is right here um what i'm gonna end up doing now is i'm gonna use a simple little gradient uh what is it called gradient overlay sorry i'm gonna go ahead and change my angle to around the same angle that i actually ended up using right here so for me negative 48 ended up working so when you have negative 48 scale around 62 because i wanted to have a fairly um close scale if i put this back to 100 really quickly you'll see it kind of gets i guess it's smoother but i would kind of want to more of a harsh sort of like transition to the color so i move i took my scale and lowered it down quite a bit I'll put it to like 65 to be kind of even with it. Okay, so now that I have that here what I used this color here What I was whatever color I guess the champion itself is or the hero excuse me or the, uh, excuse me, the legend is I'm gonna just simply click on that kind of like secondary color that they kind of have hint that around a little bit Press okay press okay again press okay once again and I can put on all three of these But for this one here he has more of like a muted tone in the skin at least so I'm gonna end up doing maybe is kind of like taking this one um, Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this gradient map right or this gradient overlay copy that layer Right click, paste that layer style, go back over here. Now to get a different rotation is obviously take this angle and just move it to the opposite side. So that's right here. So I'm gonna do now, as you can see, it's not, I don't want it to, I want it to transition in the background of the actual thing. So just right here, let's see, boom. Let's do a little bit more. Okay, now that's not working. So you see I'm moving my scale, but it's also still too far down. You can actually just simply click on the canvas itself and move it toward the actual top side of the actual uh, banner, right? So I'm gonna take this red here. I'm gonna take this to make this to a nice little gray. I'll make it, no, I'll make it to like a bluish gray, right? And I'll do is I'll kind of lower the opacity in a way, kind of like making it darker. And I would say it looks pretty good right there. Press OK. So this hex tone, by the way, hex tone, hex uh, code. English is really hard today. We're just gonna keep saying that because it's just, it's the hardest language ever. Um, 51595B, press OK, press OK again. And then it's a nice little gray. So I can just take this right here, this layer style for this one right here, right? I'll put this on this one right here. So I'm just gonna find that layer, right click, paste that layer style, and you're good to go. Okay, so I guess the last part for me is, oh, this cool little thing right here. I don't actually have, I think it's in here. I'll just take this, right? Ta-da, we'll find it again, okay? Right, take this in here, just like so. I kind of shrunk this down, and now a little cheat. If you guys didn't notice, this is actually the same thing duplicated over and over again. So hopefully, if someone looks at one side, they don't continue looking. So this is kind of like the cool little thing that you guys see, obviously in every BR to kind of show location and call, be able to call it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do. Simply just do this, drag it once, drag it over to the right hand side. Now this is one of the assets that I was talking about that'll be in the actual pack, by the way. Um, and then there you go. You have that little uh, icon locator map on the top there. And the last part that you guys see as well is this little circle part right here as well. Besides these things right here, very, very simple to do, by the way. What I would end up doing would be go right below the actual black box. We'll make a new layer. And we'll go ahead and just pen tool this just like this. Just like this, right? And then we'll go down. Then we'll go over. And then we'll go like this way, like this, this way, like that. It's a little bit different from the other one, but simply anything that kind of like complements this angle right here would be pretty good. It's not like it's the, uh, it's not very close to anything in front, uh, from, uh, uh, what is it called? Apex itself. It's more or less this cool little thing that you guys see kind of floating around the U uh, UI icons. So I kind of just want to reference that. Um, I think this right here is pretty good. All right, cool. So I'm going to just fill this in with a black. Oh, no, I'll fill it in with red. Kind of like how this red is going to probably look like that. Then we'll drag it over. We're using our alt um, duplication kind of quick shortcut. Control T. Flip this vertical. Flip this horizontal. And then we'll throw this up here. And I kind of want to leave it a little more spacing. I kind of like how that looks. So I'll see right about there. There we go. We can make this any color you kind of want. And I kind of already feel like I want to move this out like this. That'd be kind of cool, and I want to see what they would look like black, really quickly. Um, I think we're just gonna leave them black for now. Yeah, we'll leave it black for now. I don't know. I don't, what do I do for here? I did kind of make it like one black and one a different color. You can do whatever the heck you guys want. Um, excuse me. In this sort of version here, my little angles with the actual um little background, little champion sort of um triple stripe thing that's going on here kind of looks a little bit better without them but i'm just gonna leave it in there for now and just do the circles now i actually do the circles in illustrator but i'm gonna show you guys to do the inside photoshop so the way i'm gonna do this is we'll call this the um left and right uh things okay and i'm gonna make a new layer right below the black box once again 
I'm going to use a where is it? It's the ellipse tool under the actual U shortcut, just like so. I'm going to make this a nice, fairly big. Oops, keep clicking off. So the reason why I'm actually saw that happen is because I'm actually holding two different shortcuts or keys. Excuse me. I click once you start to drag. You hold alt that keeps in the same spot that you clicked originally the or other uh, or excuse me, the, uh, the the middle radius. Right. And if you hold shift, you see how I'm moving around Hold shift. It'll make it a perfect circle. So I'm going to make sure I go pretty far out so right about here i would say what i'll do is i'll keep my stroke on which is the second one so the first one here is the fill i just turn this on really quickly you'll see that it has a color filled in you might have the fill already filled in and or as your default just simply go to where it says this little none box right here it's a little red sort of slash through a white box you just press that it'll turn off your fill and if you want to turn on your stroke color which is what you're going to have to do is just make it simply black if you don't have any of these recent colors just simply make it black by either clicking here and dragging this to black and pressing OK and or clicking on any premade color that you guys want to see and or use whatever, right? Now what I'm going to do, right uh, uh, right to the right of those actual colors is a, no a cool little stroke box here, uh, which happens to be where you put your stroke number. I'm going to put 12 in first. Not thick enough. We'll put like 35. I'll say like 45. Okay, so I want to say this 45 circle is pretty good. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to space, space this out a little bit more. I'm going to then press Control T. If I need to fix the sizing, I could just hold Control T while holding Control T. Excuse me, I can take an angle here, right, and hold Shift and Alt once again, right, to make sure I can make that nice little size. And when you find out where you want to kind of have it, I would say right about here. Okay, so right about here, a little bit bigger, right about there. I would kind of say maybe a little more thick of a stroke. So if I press U on my keyboard, you can, while you have the actual layer selected, you can actually bring up the uh, little box again. And if you want to bring up the box again, it's going to be right up here this time. I'll go ahead and type in like 55 this time. Okay, I think 55 looks pretty good. Now that that's pretty much done for that part, what I would do is just simply make a duplicate of this once again and shrink this down in the middle here. And then change your, change your stroke size by pressing U once again. And I'm going to go ahead and use uh, like 25. Okay, there we go. So what I would do now to basically get those little simple cuts is I would go ahead and on this first one here, rasterize layer. So right click rasterize layer. What that ends up doing is if you can actually now erase it and stuff like that and it's no longer a shape layer. So what I'm going to do is just uh, take the M my keyboard, which is the rectangle marquee tool, right? You just want to simply just kind of make a fairly big cut like this. And okay, I would say right about here. I'm going to move this little marquee selection. So you kind of cuts to this and cuts to this. Press delete on your keyboard, and then you have those cuts going on right there. Now, if I rotate this, you can also kind of get the move the cuts in different directions. So I'll say right about here for those cuts. And now I don't want to over my character. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna click on my character. I'm gonna click control or hold control and select the thumbnail of the character itself. Then I can go back to this layer right here, the ellipse layer, right? And then either press eraser, you know, the E on your keyboard and erase it here, and or just press delete on your keyboard. That way it deletes the ellipse from over top of the actual character. So this is behind the black box, but it's of course also right above the character. You can have a little bit of fun with it and kind of keep this one above it, keep this one below it, kind of make it look like he's in a 3D space. Um, so then I'm gonna do that then. I'm gonna leave this one here, rectangle marquee tool. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one right here, delete, control T and move this and I'll make sure it kind of looks like he's above the space right here. That looks pretty cool. Um, okay, so this right here is interacting. So I'm gonna move this over again. Then I'll just move this one over for the sake of the video. Actually, what I'll do is I'll use the same exact tactic that I did before. I'll make one of them red and one of them black, just like that. There we go. <laughs> to kind of run with this little black and white theme or black and red theme with a little bit of gray, I'm gonna go ahead and simply above these, um, uh, what do you call these ellipses right here? I'm gonna make a new layer. Right on that new layer, whatever one you're above, you want to clip mask it. So I'm going to right click, clip mask onto this circle right here, right? So this layer is now clip masked to this circle right here. I'm going to click on that uh, layer that we just created. I'm going to click on this gray. So if I use the brush tool, right? You guys know the brush tool, be on your keyboard. Um, if you hold alt while the brush tool is activated, it actually activates the eyedropper tool in which if you kind of scroll and when you, uh, when you go ahead and left click and you kind of scroll, Kind of around the actual canvas itself while holding alt you can actually pick any color you want i'm actually i'm picking this little gray color i'm gonna go ahead and just make this line right here gray i'm gonna go ahead and click red and i'm gonna go make a new layer above this actual other circle on the outside right same thing we just did before and i'm gonna click right on this side over here and maybe we'll make this right over here kind of like that looks pretty cool now what i'm finding myself to see is i need to center this even though this is centered realistically from um if we're saying hey if this right here this would be sort of centered if the actual assets weren't here but we also need to visually center it as well so i'm actually noticing that the legends needs to be moved over quite a bit so move over that right now this is that and then we need the streaks 
Um, we don't need this though. Where is this? We need to take this. This is why I usually group things off of the other things, but whatever. Streaks, then we have these three things, right? Right, and then we have this right here. And then we have the actual box and the word legends and all of its cool little things. I'll just group this all together so we have it grouped next time. There we go, kind of move that and center this a little bit more correctly with the actual visuals of the actual gra uh, the graphics that are going on right now. So I think I would think this is pretty good. So I'll say this is okay. What I'm going to do right now is make sure I put a texture on this little black bars here, the little uh, cool little circles we made. So I'm going to use the same exact texture as I've been using for this little background right here. So what you can do is you simply just, if by the way, if you're finding out or wondering how I'm actually going ahead and clicking around and finding where things are by just holding or, you know, clicking on it itself, you can see how I can find any little layer that we have. If I just hover over and click on it, I'm holding control and I'm clicking on the actual uh, around where I want. So if I want the character, hold control, click on it. Hey, I found the character. If I want the background, hey, hold control, click on it. I have the background. If you guys are wondering, if you guys, when you hold control, if this isn't already uh, happened to you, if it doesn't say auto select, maybe have it checked. But if not, it's that's the whole holding control is activating the word auto select, by the way. So when you have your regular movement tool activated, which is V on your keyboard, if you hold alt, the auto select will actually activate. And realistically, I believe this is on default uh, group. Um, so you want to make sure you default it to layer and that way you can actually find layers really, really quickly. It happens very, I happen to like use it every single day of my life, of course, in Photoshop, because this makes everything really, really easy to find. So now I'm going to go to my background, click on that. So what happens now, I can make a nice little new layer with a gradient map here and we're going to use a nice little red to kind of complement this little guy right here and i think this red little preset i have already is pretty good so for this one here the hex code is 090911 has it happens to be a cool little black not really a or excuse me a little bit of a darker blue but also very very high with the black tones i guess you would say but not pure black as you'll see that's pure black it kind of gives it a little more of a, a kind of a of a lighter feel um to not be pure black and on the right hand side here it's the hex code for the red is f22323 and this little midpoint here is moved over a little bit more towards the actual left hand side so that way the actual red gets more demanded if you guys move this midpoint to the right hand side you'll see that the blacks kind of kind of command it a little bit more and realistically that doesn't look terrible i would say right about here i mean i'm gonna leave it like right there honestly I'll press ok Press, uh, get rid of that really quickly. And now, honestly, I would say you're pretty much done. Anything you do from here is more or less something you could use for your ideas. Um, you can have some really cool, like, I guess you, I'm just gonna cheat a little bit. Um, go over here. And I'll just actually use, we can actually use this, right? Drag this over, drag this texture over. So the same exact texture, actually, I'm gonna end up using. Put this over everything right and make this a pretty good size so it fits over the entire actual canvas and i'm gonna go to normal and i'm gonna use maybe like a color or a linear dodge maybe linear dodge might work the best um i think linear dodge probably works the best in this aspect or, or, or color dodge i don't know just kind of give it all of an of a, of a even texture over it then you can use the actual layer mask here to actually take your brush and use a black brush to erase right is that that right right yep black brush to erase and you kind of erase around a little bit some areas just kind of have this texture floating around the actual canvas itself um i think it looks pretty good i'll just leave it as so but basically guys that is basically the whole tutorial on how to make your own very cool simple um apex legends sort of cool little character oriented um header design so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video here today as always guys who likes on the video because it's down below and the Fortnite, I said, for, holy shit, I said Fortnite. The actual Apex Legends, pa sorry, bros. I did a Fortnite video last time. And I was like, there's no way I can just like let this go. I've got to do the Apex one. Uh, the Apex, Apex Legends resource pack for you guys as well, which will have a little more other stuff as well in here. So please enjoy it. Have fun with it. Download it. Share it. All that good stuff. I'll most likely keep it on YouTube for a full day, and I'll tweet it out on Twitter or whatnot and or whatever. I'm just going to keep it to you guys exclusive for a little bit, and then I'll tweet it out to Twitter. Um, Yeah, so with that being said, guys, much love. As always, guys, teach oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to take this right here. I was like, I got super sidetracked. I was like, I know I forgot something. We got to take this texture and put it over the black. I, I saw it. Watch this. Ta-da. Ta-da. See, I didn't forget. I just wanted to see if you guys remembered. And you're probably like, oh, shit. So, yeah, that's right. Um, It was this one and this one right here. See? Ta-da. All right. I'll see you guys later. So, let's wait you out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive And stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Peace.